what is meant by dominant and recessive logic in CAN protocol? Let's figure out answers to this question in our today's video. Hello everyone, welcome to Link Frequency and I'm Ashwarya Patta. This video is part of a course that is Introduction to Otasa. So without any further delay, let's get started. In CAN, the dominant and recessive state refers to two logical levels that can be transmitted over the communication bus. The CAN protocol uses wired and logic mechanism to determine the dominant or recessive state on the bus. The screen represents a table of wired and logic for reference. The logic is implemented through the use of differential signal methods. In CAN, the bus lines are called as CAN high and CAN low. These two lines are complementary and carry the signals to determine the logical levels. When a node wants to transmit dominant bit or logical zero, then it drives the CAN high towards the higher voltage and CAN low towards the lower voltage. This creates voltage difference between the two lines. On the other hand, when the node wants to transmit recessive bit or logic level one or no node is transmitting, then both CAN high and CAN low lines are pulled towards the middle voltage. In this case, the voltage difference between these two lines is minimal. Now, let's explore the logic levels with the help of an example. Before we start off the example, we must understand dominant state and recessive state individually. The first one is dominant state. In CAN protocol, the dominant state is represented by logic level 0. When a node in a network wants to transmit a message, it drives the bus to a dominant state by pulling the voltage levels on the bus lines in a specific way. The dominant state is characterized by low voltage levels and is considered as high priority levels. If multiple nodes try to transmit simultaneously, then the dominant state will prevail and the nodes transmitting the recessive state will back off. Moving on, the next state is recessive state. The recessive state is represented by logic level 1. When no nodes are actively transmitting, then the bus lines are in the recessive state. A node that wants to transmit a message will monitor the bus lines to ensure that no other node is driving them to a dominant state. When a node detects that the bus lines are in recessive state, it can start transmitting its message by driving the lines to a dominant state. Alright, now let's look into the example scenario. When CAN high line and CAN low line are applied with 2.5 volts, the actual differential voltage would be 0 volts. The 0 volt is considered to be the ideal state of the bus. The zero volt is read by the CAN trans receiver as recessive or logic one. On the other hand, when CAN high line is pulled up to 3.5 volts and CAN low line is pulled down to 1.5 volts, the actual differential voltage would be two volts. This is treated as dominant or logic level zero by the CAN trans receiver. By using the differential signaling and detecting the voltage difference between CAN high and CAN low, the CAN protocol provides noise immunity, even in electrically noisy environments. It allows reliable transmission and reception of data, while the differential nature of the signal enhances the robustness of the communication. The dominant or recessive state principle in the CAN allows for bus arbitration, which means that multiple nodes can coexist in the same bus and transmit the message without causing conflicts. The dominant state always has higher priority over the recessive state, thus ensuring that the higher priority message is transmitted first and the lowest priority message can wait for its turn. We will discuss more about how arbitration happens in the CAN in our upcoming videos. So, this video was all about understanding the dominant state and recessive state in the CAN bus. Thank you so much for watching our video content. If there are any queries related to the video, you can surely comment down in the comment section. Until we meet on our next video, happy learning. Tune yourself to make a difference.